Now we get to talk about sound. Sound is the best kind of wave ever. Um, the ability to hear is such an amazing gift that we have and understanding how our ears work and how sound works is, is one of the most fascinating things, I believe, in the whole subject of physics. So, sound waves are longitudinal. Okay? We get that in our heads first. And they propagate via collisions between air molecules. Or, in general, we'll talk about the sound waves propagation through liquids and so solids as well as in gases. And um, it works just like the longitudinal waves in the slinky. When we push the, um, we push the slinky forward and create a compressed region here, that the, the, the springs don't like to be as close together as they're being forced to be, and so they try and push apart. And so that, uh, that compressed region propagates forward in the slinky. Same thing happens with air. We think about this being a speaker, a speaker diaphragm. It pushes forward, compresses the air molecules. They bump against each other. They're, they're all traveling at very high rates of speed, about a half a kilometer per second as they're bouncing around in the air. So they make a lot more collisions when they're pushed and compressed together. And that compressed region wants to move to the right. And when the, and that, that compressed region is called a condensation. That's just the word that's used to describe it. Once that condensation region, or the compressed region, is moved to the right, then the air molecules that are left behind are in a rarefied state, so there are fewer of them and they're not bouncing together as much. And then that, um, that leads, leads to the next step of having that speaker move forward again and create another um, condensation. So it's, they're longitudinal waves. And the wavelength is the distance between adjacent condensations. Here's a condensation, here's another condensation. The wavelength is just the distance between them. And you say, well, hang on, Dr. Edwards. The wavelength could also be the distance between the rarefactions. I say, you're so smart. Or it could be uh, the distance between the boundary between rarefactions. You get the idea. You can measure the wavelength in a lot of different ways. But the easiest way for me to think about it is just in terms of the distance between two condensations. So this is a very important point. As I'm speaking to the camera here, my voice, uh, the um, vocal cords in my voice are, are vibrating back and forth, which are causing the molecules near my vocal cords to vibrate. Do those molecules exit through my th uh, mouth and travel all the way to the, uh, to the camera? The answer is no. What happens is that this, uh, and here's a case of a speaker, the speaker's moving back and forth. And it pushes forward and then it pushes backward. So each of the individual air molecules in the sound wave, they just move back and forth as well. They don't travel the entire distance between the speaker and the listener's ear. Uh, were, it, were, were these molecules to travel that distance, you feel this tremendous wind from the speaker, but you don't feel that. You can feel a little bit of vibration near a subwoofer um, because it's moving slowly, but only when your hand is up pretty close to it, and because it's moving back and forth. So the individual air molecules do not get carried along with the wave. That's a misconception, but since you're my student, uh, students, you're never going to make that mistake again, if you ever have made. I'm sure none of you have ever made any mistakes. So this is a demonstration of periodic waves, and And this is done using a slinky. The slinky is suspended on, on wires. So it works quite well. It works a little bit better than just putting a slinky on a table because there's some damping there. And so in this case, he's going to be moving this slinky back and forth and creating, you can actually see here and here and here, you can see um, some the compressions of the slinky. 
And this is the way that sound works. This is the best um, visualization of how sound can work. So he's moving this uh, back and forth and causing these waves to propagate forward. So they're about this far apart, as you can see. That's what sound, wave, sound waves are like. Okay. Uh, on your telephone, the, um, the rows and columns have different tones attached to them. So for each row, the so all along this row here, each one of those buttons emits a tone of 697 hertz. I don't know how they chose these tones. I think they chose them just to have them all sound distinct with each other and also be within the audible range on a, on a telephone. We'll talk more about the audible range in just a bit. Each column has a different tone. So this row has a tone of 697 hertz. This column has a, a tone of 1209 hertz. That's why you hear two tones at each instant when you push those buttons. It's always two different tones. Okay, oftentimes sound waves are represented with a graph like this. And as a result, people get confused about what a, what a sound wave, wave really is. They think that as, as my voice is speaking, or if you have a computer, uh, a speaker, that's sending sound this direction, that, that the sound motion is somehow like this. It's not. What this graph represents is the pressure as a function of a distance. So when, when my vocal cords come forward, that creates this uh, condensation, this compressed region, and the pressure is high there. Then the pressure is low, then the pressure is high, then it's low, etc. So this is the condensation regions here and here, and then these are the rarefied regions, and that's how we can represent a sound wave. Even though it's not transverse, this kind of looks like a graph of a transverse wave, but it's not. It just represents the pressure. Um, particle of dust, uh, what's the motion of the dust look, look like? Uh, will it oscillate left and right if there's a a frequency here of uh, that you're playing to a speaker and and so there's a vibration 226 cycles per second we're asking what that little speck of dust is going to do suspended in the air will it oscillate left and right with a frequency of 226 Hertz and the answer is yes it's uh, the sound wave is going to move along it's a compression wave so here's a compressed region press compressed compressed um, That'll push the, the dust particle back and forth, left and right, as the wave passes, passes through it. It's not going to oscillate up and down. That's a transverse wave, and sound is not a transverse wave. 